Well, welcome to day 17 of our 21 days of renewal. And we pray that your heart and soul has been refreshed and encouraged on this journey so far. But today we're going to be reading and looking at Psalm 132. So I encourage you to open up the word and let's read it together. Psalm 132 says this, Lord, remember David and all his self-denial. He swore an oath to the Lord. He made a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or go to my bed. I will allow no sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard it in Ephrathah. We came upon it in the fields of Jah. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool saying, Arise, Lord, and come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. May your priests be clothed with your righteousness. May your faithful people sing for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not reject your anointed one. The Lord swore an oath to David, a sure oath he will not revoke. One of your own descendants I will place on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and the statutes I teach them, then their sons will sit on your throne forever and ever. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling saying, this is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned for I have desired it. I will bless her with abundant provisions. Her poor I will satisfy with food. I will clothe her priests with salvation and her faithful people will ever sing for joy. Here I will make a horn grow for David and set up a lamp for my anointed one. I will clothe his enemies with shame, but his head will be adorned with a radiant crown. It's a beautiful psalm. It's one of the longer of the psalms of ascent that we have shared in this journey so far. And there really is, which I'm sure you've seen so much that we could pull out and unpack and study further and meditate on. You know, it's a psalm about King David's heart to have the presence of God come close, which we know at this time was the Ark of the Covenant. He wanted, his desire was for the Ark to come and be close to dwell with God's people and with him and for a temple to be built to house the presence of God. And it's a psalm about God, uh, not just wanting to establish King David's rule, but uh, his rule for generations to come. And this psalm is ultimately pointing to the coming of Christ who is, of course, the one true king who came to establish his rule uh, forever on the earth, but also to set up his permanent dwelling place, which is not a wooden box and not a beautiful temple, but you and I, amen, you and I, his people. As I was reading this psalm, I was once again just struck by King David's hunger for the presence of God. You know, his heart for God and his desire for God to be close to him. You know, these words, I will not enter my house or go to my bed. I will allow no sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. I love that. You know, with, with, with all that David had, his wealth, his power, his victories, his reputation, his success, you know, for the most part, David was a man who never lost sight of how he got there, of the one who had truly, truly brought him that far uh, to, to the place that he was describing. David was a man who knew that he was nothing without God. You know, he was a man who had in the natural every, you know, reason to be confident and to feel secure, yet he was unable or perhaps more importantly, unwilling to find rest and satisfaction in anything else outside of the presence of God. It's beautiful. But equally true in this beautiful psalm is God's desire for the exact same thing. <laughs> and again, this isn't just speaking of King David, but it points to the coming of Jesus. It says, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling saying, this is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned for I have desired it. You know, it was God's desire uh, for his people to be his dwelling. His desire and purpose was for no separation, but to be close and to dwell with the people that he had made with us. Amen. And ultimately this was fulfilled in Christ, as we know, and the giving of himself uh, through the Holy Spirit. 
And so in this Psalm, we see a heartfelt prayer uh, to be close to God from David. And we also hear that it was God's desire to be close to his people. It immediately it reminded me of John 17. We hear a heartfelt prayer from Jesus himself to his father about his disciples, but also about you and I and everybody else who would come to believe in him through his disciples. These are Jesus' words, John 17, verse 22. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be as one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. That's amazing words. In the Passion Translation, it says this, you live fully in me, and now I live fully in them. Incredible. You know, what David cried out for in this psalm many, many, many years ago, we've received it. In fact, you know, we've received over and above anything that David could possibly have imagined when he was praying that prayer. You know, we don't have God in a box. We don't have God in a, in a beautiful temple that we go and visit. No, we, our very selves, have become the temple that now houses the presence of the Almighty One. Such an incredible thought. That thought alone today, church, is worthy of our meditation, worthy of our worship and our thanksgiving. You know, as I read this and meditated upon it myself, I found myself moved to pray, you know, a prayer this year that that despite all things that I'm believing for this year, despite all the things that I want to see happen, you know, the goals and the dreams that I have for this year, you know, my prayer was, was, was truly that even today that I would live more aware of who is dwelling within me, that I am the dwelling place of the Most High God, of Jesus Christ himself, to live more aware and to live my life in a way that cooperates more with the one who is living inside me. So before we launch into this year, you know, let's consider you know, what it is that we're hungering for most. You know, what have we elevated to be you know, our most important pursuit this year? You know, setting goals and having dreams for the year ahead, that's good, that's great, and there's wisdom in doing that. But in doing all of that, let's ask ourselves these questions today. You know, is my heart cry and hunger like that of King David's in this psalm? Is my heart hungry and in pursuit of the presence of God? You know, do, do I truly hold the conviction that above all else I could pursue this year and in this life, you know, God and his presence having influence on every area of my life, is that the most precious and valuable thing that I could pursue? Another great question to ask is, am I living aware that I too was the ultimate goal that Jesus pursued and laid down his life for and prayed about? It's incredible that within me, Jesus lives and wants to walk out this life and this year right alongside me. You know, so perhaps today alongside this incredible Psalm, you know, we could meditate on the words of John also of Jesus' prayer and maybe even repeat them throughout our day and let the full weight and meaning of what these words are sink in and find new meaning uh, as we live out our day today. Abide in me and I in you. Incredible words. No more wooden boxes, no more beautiful temples that we have to go and visit, but you and I fully filled with the fullness of the presence of the Most High God. Amen.